Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the MLG Winter Championships. I'm Rob Simpson. And I'm Robin. And we are very fortunate here, man. We got one last cast of the night, and we are lucky enough to be uh, casting Championship Losers Round 2. It's going to be Ostagy versus Polk. Yeah, this will actually be pretty interesting. It's going to be a relatively explosive ZVT. Yeah. I think now Ostoji is that person that's been a bit of an up and comer. Yeah. And and we just haven't gotten to see too much of him. I know that you're also a big fan of Ostoji. Yeah, he's uh he's had a lot of potential. Just he's never really ever gone to a major tournament. I believe the only one that uh, I actually mentioned this early on in gameplay stream too. The only one that really that people knew him from was the Blizzard Invitational in Correct. 2011. And unfortunately, he just didn't play so well. Huck beat him out. CT1 beat him out as well. But he's definitely been the dark horse of this tournament, really showing up and doing very, very well. Uh, I was able to cast him a little bit early on against Naniwa, and he put up some very serious games. He lost 2-0, but overall, mm -hmm. it was still pretty fantastic. Well, and that was the big thing about him playing at the North American Battle.net Invitational, was that his, his matches against Huck were actually extremely yeah. close. So moving into this match, on the left side of the map, playing as the Red Zerg representing Team Itsukosu, we've got a Stoji. Yes, that's right, man. And down here in the bottom right corner, who would we have, Rob Simpson? Oh, down here in the bottom right, Mr. Robin. We have representing Team TSL, Polk. Yeah, man. I actually was able to catch a couple of seconds of his game against Idra, and he was doing very, very well. Uh, hit, the thing about Polk is that his first couple of Hellions when he goes Reactor Hellion is so darn strong. He just gets the best engages I have ever seen out of a Terran player. And it really sets him up to have a nice lead going into the mid game. Uh, of course, it's really important for Zerg to make sure that they don't lose any drones in those engagements, but Polk makes sure that it always happens. So we'll see what his plan is here from this map. Uh, again, in Tiki Shipyard, a lot of fun for Terran players. They have so many possibilities. They can go for macro-oriented type of play, uh, even some early pressure if they would like, knowing that it's forced cross positions. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Holt, as you mentioned, his control is impeccable, so you can bet that he's going to be doing everything in his power to just get the small advantages in his game. Obviously, he's coming into this extremely confident. He is a seasoned StarCraft II veteran, and Astoji is very much a newcomer to this live tournament scene. We've seen Polt accomplish just so many things, and you can bet that, I mean, after his matches earlier today, he didn't have the most impressive, uh, the most impressive run in the groups. He was just talking about how uh, not close his matches against JYP were. So he's kind of coming into this with a little bit of uh, a, a mental deficit. Yeah, uh, and the thing we have to consider here, both of us, uh, is that really it doesn't matter about those early games on. Yes, they were great. They played well. They got here. Now what's matter is they have to win these games. If yes. not, they're out. They're done. Uh, so it's really important if they want to continue moving forward and play against Kawhi Light, who's actually the next opponent in this bracket oh. for these two, they need to win these games. They need to have complete 100% focus on the series here. It's so important for both players. Now, oh. checking over into uh, Stoji, he is throwing down the 15 hatchery, has followed up with the gas, and now the pool. So he knows it's the cross positions, uh, and he hasn't had really any too, too much threat of much coming his way. He hasn't seen a bunk or anything over in his natural that he can go for a little bit of a greedier play, get that gas out, get the speed ready to go, and also follow up with his pool. So he's going to be just fine here. And we know that as well from having the bird's eye view. Right, and clearly Astoji is just going to be playing this relatively safe. He doesn't want to lose on a silly thing. This could potentially be his last series of the entire event. And even though that, yes, it's so wonderful that he made it top 32, if you're finishing only top 28, you're going to leave with a pit in your stomach. Yeah, for sure, man. Especially after coming so far, he's been doing so well. So yeah, coming from the open bracket? Yeah, it's actually quite hard, man. He's played so many games, and that's that's quite daunting on a player. He just wants to get through this, get some nice rest, and then go in tomorrow with a level head. So that's right. do have an SV coming in for a scout. We'll get an idea of exactly what is going on. We see Paul clicking on that gas an idea of what the timing was, does realize that speed is the only thing there, and did see no drones were still mining gas besides the one there. So right. no, no insane tech will be coming such as a bailing bus or anything like that. Uh, so now on the other side of the coin, though, talking about Polk for just a little bit, he has started his factory. It's just about to wrap up. His reactor is just about done as well. So you can bet that we're going to see those Hellions out there that you spoke about. But now back to a little bit more of that mental game. Polk also came from the open bracket. He has had to take down some extremely impressive plays. We watched him in a huge match last night against Stefano, who's currently considered to be one of the greatest Zergs in the world. Oh, my gosh. That was a nail-biting series. I actually got the chance to watch that as well. Just Polk just... He puts on so many great games, and now we should be able to witness his Hellion play here. Notice he still has been mining gas as well, following up with a uh, tech lab at home. Should maybe see another racks as well whenever he gets the resources ready and really to start a production. Uh, now, first two Hellions will be popping out. Make sure we keep an eye on that. Now, the thing is, is us the OG ready? He has another queen on the way. Has he got a fourth one out? No. Uh, a really popular play from Zerg as of late is grabbing those four queens. It's so great against his Hellion play, but he's going to be electing to grab three and a spine crawler. So he should be okay, but positioning is really key here. Now it can be, but so one thing that we've talked about as well, or that we've seen repeatedly in ZBT is that the Zerg player 
could have potentially also thrown down a Roach Warren. You only need to have a couple Roaches out to effectively stop any Hellion Harass. And now Pult's going to be moving across the map with his first two Hellions. Of course, the very nice positioning with his two Queens. Going to be able to get in a couple free pot shots there. And is Pult going to be able to get by this? No, likely not. Oh, man, and he, there he is just trying to scoot around the left side. The spine crawler is just about to wrap up, and then he's going to be able to pull back for his defense. Notice the positioning of the queens. They were on the higher part of that ramp. So, again, you get the two pot shots that you mentioned. It's so helpful whenever Hellion's coming in. Oh, wow. Paul does have four. He gets a nice volley up, and a Soji's not even pulling his drones off. Wow. He's lost a total of five drones there, I think, which is actually pretty big, and it was basically for free. Huh. He's lost a few health points, but that's about it. From here, he can still deny a creep. These queens are actually kind of afraid to pursue uh, these Hellions right about now. Now they will be doing so, but now retreating. He's still afraid of losing more drones, because that was a good shot there from Paul. Yeah, that was enormous, actually, just getting in there. I... I I'm surprised by the positioning. You would imagine that, that Chris would have seen something like that coming. It was unfortunate for him. Now, he's getting a couple additional Zerglings down there, but... It, okay, good. Moving them to the left side of that natural means that he might be able to defend this. But, of course, Pola is going to be following up. He brings an additional two Hellions up into the base and is just going to get off as much damage as he can. One of those queens is just about dead. Now, Polt, meanwhile, back at his base, has also been working on his tech. He does have his expansion down, hasn't done anything as far as workers go. He's just starting to transfer a few of those over there. But now he's adding on a starport. Yeah, and this could get dirty very fast. He's going straight into medevac timing, so he's actually got a decent amount of Marines in the field as well, which leads me to believe that he kind of wants to go for some kind of drop play in the main. Luckily now, Astoji does have some roaches uh, on the field here, so he'll be able to finally deal with the natural. A couple of things Astoji could have done a little bit better here. As one, his queen could have gone in the main, brought the other one down that way. He has a full health queen ready to go. Evolution chamber that he threw down in his main. It may look like he wants to kind of hide this tech, but it's, it's nice to throw it back here and you can save your drones as well as over here as well. It makes it a little bit harder for Pult to want to dive yeah. into the natural. Well, but you might as well, right? Yeah, because you might as what, well. what use is it having that I mean, Evo Chamber? It looks like he just anyway. wants to hide the tech, hmm. uh, so Pult won't be ready for the mid-game, which looks like it might be some Infestor play, as it is two upgrades coming out right yeah. here, level 1 attack and level 1 Carapace. But Ooh, check it in. Slightly interesting coming out of Astosia right now. He has just placed down his third as well while he's teching up into his lair, which could likely mean that, yes, he is going to be heading into those Infestors. As you mentioned, and man, well, okay, so Asoji's been doing a pretty good job staying on top of his droning, and Pult, surprisingly enough, or I, is slightly keeping up with the STV. Yeah, uh, he went ahead and delayed his layer a tad bit longer so he can get out a few more drones. Uh, so he's going to be feeling a little bit better in terms of the economy. But uh, again, the layer's a little bit delayed. But you know what? He's going for infestors most likely uh, instead. So it won't really matter. If you want a faster layer, it's because you want to get out those munis as fast as possible. But right. Uh, with a few Hellions being on the field, Pulse going to keep that map control for a little bit. There is a decent amount of Roaches, but the Marines are chasing them afar. Uh, they will be retreating back to the natural. Ten more Lynx, seven more oh Roaches man. being queued up here for Astoji. He's able to get in there with his stim, getting off a few kills, only losing one of his Marines so far. The assault continues. He does not have anything out there to slow those units, so as soon as they get to the creep, they're going to be able to get away just about unscathed. Now the lair has finished up for Astoji, so he's going to be making a tech play relatively soon. He's also throwing down a macro hatch up in his main, and he's forced into canceling his third. He just does not have enough units to prevent this assault. Yeah, Pult's hitting some great timings here. As you can see, Astoji's putting a lot of resources. He threw down the macro hatch because he has to. He has no way to really spend the money anyway. He needs Larva available to him, even with throwing roaches. Right now, oh. he just has too many drones. Going to go ahead and engage here, pulling up the health bars. Uh, it looks like he'll be huh. okay. He's got enough roaches, but again, Effectively, Pult has done what he wanted to do. He denied that third for a while, delaying Astoji as much as possible. Now, what tech route is Astoji going to be going for? He hasn't thrown anything down quite yet. He's grass oh, and there, there it is. The infestation pit, so that's the choice that he's going to be making. Meanwhile, behind that aggression, Pult has done a wonderful job. He's thrown down his third base, so that does mean that he is expanding behind, and that's exactly what he needs. He just needs to maintain a lead for long enough, but Astoji may have a window of opportunity coming up. If he just starts pumping in as or pumping out as many units as he can, spending all of those currently floating resources, maybe he can break the front, although I think that Pult adding on the barracks and just given the timing of how long it's gonna take so to get around the field, well. he's gonna be able to hold anyway. Well, with the number of Marines here, it looks like Astoji's going to pull on back. I was a little fearful. It did look like this attack could have done a lot of damage because Siege Mode is not out, and I actually right. don't see any Marauders on the field. So the Roaches actually would have done pretty well with Link's support. But it looks like Astoji's looking to go ahead and pull back. He just wanted to get pull out of his base uh, for a while and allow himself to get some upgrades out. You see passing lands on the way, plus one range on the way, number level two carapace. So he's trying his best to get upgrades out, but Pole is being constantly aggressive, making these lings and roaches retreat as well. And the great thing about roaches for Pole here Ooh. is that he knows he's doing a little, oh, oh, delaying tech with the gasping spin. But look at the surround here. Ling's going to go ahead and surround the marines, but they are saved by the medevacs and now on the high ground. Yes, and that nice drop on the high ground means that he's going to be able to attack for just a few more seconds there. 
Of course, he's forced to retreat because the Lings were wrapping around. But now Astoji has successfully finally established that third, which is a very nice play for him. Pult setting up camp out in front of his natural uh, so that now he can effectively be able to defend his third. But Astoji is getting in, taking advantage of the small window of opportunity, getting some links up into that third. And there are just so many mules that are exposed. Taking out those mules means that Pult is going to be behind, a, I guess that, oh that's almost God. 900 minerals that you're losing. Well done there by Astoji. We saw him hit the whole position there, and he killed up, yeah, like you said, a few mules there, which is a lot of resources uh, uh, in terms of minerals, and also got a few SUV kills. Granted, yeah. it was only seven, but still, that's a nice little use of a small amount of links there. 55-55 uh, is the economy right now. We're a bit tied up when it comes down to it. Now, the thing is, it gets a little scary here. Whenever Paul has three bases, one, he's got Siege Mode already in the way. Oh. He's doing his own upgrades now. Uh, level one armor, level one infantry weapons, level one uh, mechanical weapons as well for yeah. his Siege tanks. He's going to get pretty darn strong, and he knows he can sit back for a while here once Siege Mode finishes up. Uh, the question is, what exactly is the Stoji going to be going for? Infestation Pit is down, got a few Infestors out, but nothing really too crazy in terms of units. Yeah, he doesn't have too much stuff out right now. Uh, it seems like it's going for that semi, I guess you could say chef style play, where he's going for Infestors and the Fast Lings, because that can be extremely effective if his units aren't able to move anywhere, you can just crush through them. Well, oh, and Polt went for a little bit of an assault, but Astoji did a great job cleaning that up. Yeah, he had some lings are ready to go, and Polt had to pick up and leave. Now, we see a Spire being thrown down right now, which uh, I'm kind of curious. I think it's a little bit late, too, mi too late for me to store a lot of gas into a lot of resources yeah. for his uh, ground units and Scotland Fetzers. There goes the high, finally. Yeah, and you can see that actually Astoji does have six gas as well, so he's going to be able to do some pretty heavy tech. Astoji effectively, I mean, maybe this entire time he's just been trying to figure out a way to buy his way into Brood Lords. Yeah. Uh, and he was trying to, throughout the whole entire game to go for a fast Broodlord rush, but Pult put so much aggression on him. Normally we've been seeing Broodlords available around the 1430 to 1530 mark. Now he's just getting his hive. It's a little over the quarter of the way done. So effectively, Pult held him off for a while now, but he wants to get aggressive soon. You want to hit before too many Broodlords get on the field. It's a little bit hard, though, with the amount of Infestors that are starting to pop out yeah. for Astoji. So he's still paying pretty well, although all the delays that were created by Pult. And unfortunately for Astoji as well, it seems as Pult has taken a massive supply leap. Currently about 40 supply up at this point so Polt is going to hit his comfortable timing at max supply much much before Astoji is likely going to be ready to handle the assault yeah the the objective here for Astoji I don't know if he should oh he does get a nice bungle so oh. he can't engage it see things do see John up Link's going to go ahead and, and commit to killing off these nice. uh, bio force nicely well done there. He did lose, it looks like, two investors, well, So though. what was nice, too, to get in there was that he got his lings on top of the fungal units and pulled back half of them so that the rest of the siege tanks could lay down the attacks onto the zerglings and just kill the marines for him. Yeah. Well done there. Using that splash damage to his advantage. So it looks like at this point, uh, Pult's going to keep moving forward. Another oh. nice fungal goes down once again. Oh, there man. is a technical low ground. Got to be careful. There we go. Nicely well done. But Marines oh. were actually there as well, trying to base some of those units in. And it looks like the Infestor count goes from 9 to 5 there. So uh, four Infestors have been killed off, but they did trade a sizable bio force for it. Yeah, but at this point, you, you don't really want to see a Stoji trading gas yeah. for minerals. Oh, oh, man. And now we see Pult is able to set up out in the center of the map. But, of course, Stoji is going for a bit of a run by here down potentially into the natural. That fourth is almost undoubtedly going to go down as Stoji also tries to establish his fifth. Now, what is Stoji going to do with these lings and roaches? He can't run them by. There's just too many units there, and he really doesn't have enough to sandwich this force in the middle. Yeah, Pult is uh, a step ahead of him here. He, he's trying to do a Stoji. He's trying to force Pult to relinquish mid-control. Uh, unfortunately, Because he wants to get that greatest fire done right. so he can get out some Brew Lords. Unfortunately, uh, Pult, again, is a step ahead of him. Has a nice supply lead as well. Can really just do whatever he wants to prevent that from happening while still kind of moving forward. The uh, thing is, He's getting towards Crete spread, which is a little bit scary. You don't want to completely commit to going over until you know what happened. And he sends down a scan to get exactly a good idea of how many units are on the field. And Fetzer's in the top right corner and just lings here and a few roaches for a Stoji. This could be potentially really scary if he goes for the engagement. Yeah, he if Polt doesn't make a big push right now, we're going to see just many units out on the field. His investors have a lot of energy at this point. He hasn't had to do too many fungals. And he's got five Broodlords on the way, in addition to three more Corruptors as well. So you can bet that those are going to turn into Broodlords as soon as he frees up a little bit more. He just needs to delay Pult as long as he can. He's trying his best. He's got a flank set up too as well. Gonna try and get for another counterattack, but Pult, knowing that he's trying to go for the counterattack, is already ready. A few links will be going down as well. And now it's worth hard to get you get your Brew Lords in. Just, you have your opponent on the, your side of the map here. If a third goes down, it gets so much harder. Brew Lords, though, now moving forward. They're gonna try and there start going away. Taking those links and bringing them back. They were thwarted from being able to continue that nice assault there. And he gets the nice surround on all of those tanks. Finish him off, landing the fungal just to make sure and for the first time in a long time, we see Astoji taking the supply lead, but of course, oh man, 
Pult is following up by starting the production of three Thors. Yeah, three Thors on the way. Vikings, a good choice as well. Really helps out against those Broodlords. Uh, and so we, we need a Soji to move forward. He needs one to prevent this force from happening. And yes, he's now doing the SVs are being picked apart currently at the moment. There is one more command center at the oh. third, but Link's now coming from the bottom left. A nice fungal, a second fungal as well. And he's going to get great uh, trades here. Yeah, this is awesome for a Soji. Now uh, his Broodlords oh, are dear. a little bit too far away. Oh man, and Pult went in for a pretty big Blank there, and he brings in the Marines. A lot of the uh, two of the Broodlords, I guess, have gone down. Oh man, and actually, the tide has shifted massively into Pult's favor. He's now cleaned up just about all of Astoji's board presence. And as Astoji was engaging down there, he had those fungals onto the units, and he was just taken from behind. Well, now moving forward, oh, this is no. exactly what we need to do. Try and catch Broodlords that are trying to morph in. These will be going down. Corrupt is dying off as well. Link's trying to go for a counterattack, but Pole is not phased whatsoever. His macro is kicked in. He's got units already in his natural. You can see from the minimap. He wants to move forward. He wants to get to a point before Astoji can match up. Uh, can mass up. Link's now heading straight to the third, and there's actually only a Thor there to defend that, but at the same time, he's pushing a third of yeah. a Stoji. And a Stoji just doesn't have a good way to stop this. He's not going to be able to get in and get us around. That investor does not have enough energy to get off a fungal, and this is looking pretty grim for a Stoji. Sure does. The third so in trouble now explodes into pieces. That one investor here trying his best to defend a little bit. Link's now popping out of the hatch. He's going to try and uh, get to uh, a point where they can contest these Marines, but there's so many Marines right now. There are three, three upgrades on the way. Three, uh, two's about to finish up. Yep, Astoji does GG, and it looks like Holt will take game number one from him. Very, very, very well played uh, by Holt right there. And just delaying Astoji so much. His uh, his greater Spire tech was delayed by about four to five minutes than you would normally see it in a ZBT. So very, very well done by him. Yeah, that was unfortunate, or so unfortunate for Astoji. We saw Astoji able to defend Pult's large aggression initially. Yep. Pult was forced out of the center of the map, and once Astoji took it and started fighting around the, the lower expansion, I guess, down there in the middle, you then saw Pult take his Marines and stem them all behind the Broodlords, and even though that Astoji won the battle, Pult won the war. Yeah, uh, we, we've been seeing Pult in general, actually, on Antiki Shipyard using the capability that Zergling normally does and gets the surrounds coming from flanks. And we saw that flank actually from him with a few Marines in the top right corner and took out a lot of Broodlords. And that really sealed him the deal in that game, allowed him to do a lot of aggressiveness behind that. I love how he baits Zerg into a position where they think they're going to win an engagement and then comes in from a flank from the top right corner. He's done that against Stefano. It's, it's, it's so amazing to watch and it's so cool that he's using that tactic to his advantage. Yeah, so the question now is whether or not Astoji is going to be able to come back. We'll find out as soon as we come back from this brief break. Stay tuned for game number two of Pult versus Astoji. I'm Rob Simpson. And I'm Robin. Let's go to commercial.